certified American Society of Neuro Rehabilitation and is senior staff in Beaumont Health System and St. John's Health System and also editor to Neuro News and is presently practicing at Grosse Pante in Michigan and uh, incidentally he received uh, an award from our late Prime Minister Narasimha Rao for Overseas Citizenship Award. More now he is uh, going to speak on medical more complication of sleep apnea. More and, than uh, that. He has got other interests no, as all you know. That later. <laughs> and more, more than that, he is now the Rajendra, the recently released movie. He has directed that movie and he was the hero of that movie. So he is right. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not here to come and fight or dance with the girl ladies or do all the things. I'm talking about sleep disorders. So let's let's switch the gears and talk about that. Then uh, you know when I finished my neurology. Uh, residency, you know, the sleep disorders were one of the things uh, which are foremost and it was the fellowship I did. The most, mostly it interested me was because uh, when we used to treat patients early in the morning, we used to get coats, cardiac arrest. Uh, they happen only in the early in the morning, four to five o'clock. We used to get, what's happening here, you know, we used to wake up and go for the coats. So there is a reason for that. It is it is sleep dependent and also strokes also happen in early in the morning. Wake up in the morning and you are paralyzed. So why all these things and you know, it interested me that we spend about 50% of the time or not, uh, babies uh, spend 50% of the time but the adults at least about six to seven hours of their life but nothing is studied about their medical uh, problems during the sleep. So that interested me to get into sleep and uh, favorably so. I am a neurologist, practicing neurologist clinical neurophysiologist and also I'll take care of uh, neuro rehabilitation. But sleep is 50% of my business. So I also am uh, a vice chairman for global health group. We have global hospitals all around the country but I don't practice here. I practice in the US and I'm more administration here. What is sleep? Sleep is a reversible state of consciousness with complete reversal of state upon awakening. So there is no difference between dead person and uh, sleep person except the dead person cannot wake up and a sleep person would wake up from the brain is concerned. So is that, is that true? No, it's not because it is more of active physiological state. It is not, there is, there is no difference morphologically when you look at outside but uh, people who are sleeping actively going through in a physiological state. It is very essential for human existence. Lack of sleep, especially REM sleep, can lead to death. So there are experiments done on the rats where they will be in a, a kind of a treadmill kind of thing. They, they fall asleep, then they will, uh, when they go into REM sleep, then we stimulate. So at the end of five to six uh, days, they, they die. So lack of sleep itself can, can cause death. Various hormones, pituitary regulatory factors and hypothalamic, you know that there are hypothalamic uh, regulatory factors. They, uh, they stimulate the pituitary and you get all the hormones. They're also sleep regulated. The, it depends on sleep-wake cycle, the, all through the day in a circadian rhythm, the different uh, hormones are secreted in a different quantities. So what is physiology of sleep? Brainstem has nuclei both in, for the REM sleep and non-REM sleep. REM is rapid eye movement sleep, which is essentially, which is about 25% of the sleep. Uh, let's talk about the sleep cycle. What, when you go into the sleep, then there are, at least if you are sleeping for six hours, there is one and a half hour cycle. That's 90 minutes. During that 90 minutes, first you will go into stage one, stage two sleep, delta sleep and REM sleep. So you have a six cycles of those during the night. When you go into sleep, first you, you would go into the more of a delta sleep and less of stage one and two sleep. And early in the morning, you get more of a REM sleep. So that's why early in the morning you get dreams. Dream comes in the rapid eye movement sleep. So that's why early in the morning you get the dreams. And also during the REM sleep, there is variations of blood fluctuations with reference to uh, the hypertension and uh, cardiac irregularities. That's why people have cardiac, de cardiac deaths or cardiac arrhythmias. And early in the morning you get code. They call like a code, uh, 911 code, um, uh, where uh, you, you have to go in and uh, resuscitate them. 
it is the same reason because of the blood pressure fluctuations early in the morning people get strokes so rapid eye movement sleep and there is non rapid eye movement sleep which is stage 1 stage 2 delta sleep it's called non rapid eye movement sleep so i i talked about that for the sake of brevity and i wanted to focus on medical complications i will skip this uh, i we, we talked about during the rapid eye movement sleep there is rapid eye movements and one more important thing about rapid eye movement sleep is you know for the people who can remember the neuroanatomy we have a brain stem inhibitory reticular formation so from the brain stem then there is a inhibitory reticular formation which will go on go on stimulate on the anterior horn cells so what it does is it inhibits the anterior horn cells and you lose all your muscle tone so that's why during the rem sleep the whole body is relaxed the reason for that is brain is going through these dreams and when you act the dreams so if somebody is chasing you and you are running away or some you are fighting with somebody you will be in the bed you will be doing the fighting in the middle of the sleep to prevent this to prevent accidents the body blocks these anti horn cells so that you are completely paralyzed so the reason for that is during rem sleep we are all our files whatever the data what we collect all through the day all this lecture and reason on to the when we go into the rem sleep we are putting them whatever is important you putting them in files so that's why the frontal lobe stimulate when I'm, actually the occip, the brain stem stimulates the occipital lobe where there is the all visual data is there and frontal lobe is is a is actually li- looking at all these things it becomes a visitor or a audience in this dream so that's why you can visualize these dreams when you are trying to wake up so anyway it's important that we need to have the dream sleep or rem sleep for for the sake of uh, cleansing up all the data which is not important or putting less important data in a different files more important data which is uh, in a more uh, recent files so that's why it's called opg spike that's alvo panto geniculite spikes those are the things you can see on the uh, on the readings in clinical neurophysiology so i talked about the the sleep cycle that is stage 1 stage 2 delta sleep and rem sleep after that you go back to stage 1 stage 2 delta sleep and rem sleep you do four cycles that's 90 minutes each so in 6 hours you have a four cycles which you finish and at the end of this 6 hours you would you could have spent stage 1 sleep which is about 5% stage 2 sleep which is about 50% stage 3 sleep it's about 20 to 25% and rem sleep 25% so this if you sleep that the quality of sleep in that 6 hours is good enough and you are getting up ready to go if you do not have rem sleep properly whatever the reason may be and i will talk about the sleep apnea then the brain cannot process did not process all the old data so there is a information overload so people would be irritable they could be depressed and they can have a problem with perception and they can they can have a problem of information taking and always they wanted to sleep and during the day time they will fall asleep because the rem pressure is so high because body needs rem sleep to live that's why you know we're sitting in a lecture like this uh, or uh, people are who are driving or sitting and doing nothing or watching tv they will fall asleep or in a dark room or in any board meetings so this is kind of a situation so if you fall asleep well you know everybody falls asleep no not everybody falls asleep if somebody had a good night sleep with all these uh, percentages of good sleep then they do not fall asleep so if somebody is falling asleep in front of you saying that well or uh, people had experiences that they are sitting at the traffic light and they are dozing off uh you need to think about you now you may not be getting the uh, proper sleep so circadian rhythm you know it is controlled by pineal hypothalamic axis so it is all stimulated by the light so why we have 12 hours and 12 hours in the old days when we did not have electric light thanks to thomas alva edison who gave us the electric bulb then he reduced our sleep before that people people used to sleep by about 6 7 o'clock in the evening they will look at the uh, stars and tell stories and sleep Then in the morning we wake up at 4:30 5 o'clock because cocks are making noise and they'll they'll go on life goes on now we have all the three shifts 
morning day shift and afternoon shift and night shift so we are all screwed up because of our circadian rhythm so that's the electric bulb is the problem so but uh, coming come to reality what what's going on is we this sleep the sleep is very important with reference to that the internal clock in the hypothalamus that's why when you have a jet set you know you, you go from north america to here then you are flipped so in the night becomes day day becomes night your body feels slow and you know you can't work because your hormones the hormones which keep us awake is growth hormone and as well as acth so all these things and also thyroid thyroid stimulating hormone they all pump in the blood pressure would pump in the temperature increases during the day time night time they are going to fall down so that the body will go to sleep so what i do i always travel almost every two weeks i travel from us to here for various reasons so when i come in small tip for everybody i work out like 2 hours during workout what happens yeah, aerobic workout you produce lot of these hormones so the body self regulates itself and try to sleep the same time as the locals locals means wherever you go so you come to india you sleep at the time of in the in the evening so that way you can manipulate or circulate your own circadian rhythm very faster as the age goes on the manipulation of the circadian rhythm is difficult but you should keep trying so i will keep keep going the age uh so what are the different sleep disorders disorder of excessive somnolence excessive somnolence that means they are not getting enough sleep or is it because of the disease i will talk about concentrate on people who are not getting enough sleep in the night the reason is because they are getting interrupted many things interrupt periodic leg movements of sleep and they have a pain body they are thinking something i am not going to talk about any of that i am going to concentrate on one thing that is obstructive sleep apnea that's the topic of the today obstructive sleep apnea is where people stop breathing in the night the reason for that is because of two things one there is a back back of throat there is a large a soft palate tonsils there is not enough space number two is the muscle tone problem in the rem sleep that's why i talked about rem sleep in during the rem sleep the muscle tone is dropped during that time the muscle if the muscles of the throat are more of the fat content then they relax faster people who are obese they have increased fat content and they relax the muscles faster especially during the rem sleep so we are talking about small airway because of the large soft palate and large tonsils number 2 is increase in body weight if you have body mass index which is high then the people will relax their muscles in the back of the throat and they fall as they they cannot breathe they choke they choke choke in the sleep that's why the precursor of choking of the sleep is the noise a lot of air trying to go in through the small opening that tells you that's the snore so if somebody is snoring that means they are having a small problem with reference to small airway problem number 2 if they the when they are when they are gasping for air you know you might have seen people lying on their back and they are heavy and they are <gasps> like that in the, and then they will start breathing and they will wake up that is nothing but stopping breathing it's not funny we used to make fun of people you know, even when i was a child i remember so basically they are choking to death they are choking to create damage to their body you need two things for in the in, you lose two things because of this one is because of lack of sleep when you go into the deep sleep like that stop breathing then your brain cannot go into the deep sleep you get out of the rem sleep go into stage 1 or stage 2 every time you go into the deep sleep your muscles relax problem with stopping breathing brain that doesn't get oxygen brain says okay i cannot sleep in the rem sleep anymore so it becomes like that perpetual rat where people, <laughs> after lack of sleep you know people can die this this can cause rem sleep dysfunction and also if somebody is sleeping through all these things despite the lock, sometimes what happens to the balance you you have to sleep and you need oxygen so brain says okay we will i will live with about 70% sao2 then you come and sleep through what happens if you have a 70% sao2 you know below 90% you start causing damage what happens the body whole body is suffering so we say now perpetual hypoxic state all night so hypoxia can cause problem with uh, 
several things. So that's the topic of the today. Sleep apnea, I, I already talked about, it causes oxyhemoglobin desaturation uh, and uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Basically, we talk about uh, so the wakefulness uh, and if you go into sleep, airflow cuts off. This is the effort. So the effort is there, that's why he, he, he trying to breathe and there is no airflow. So that's called obstructive sleep apnea. So exo sleepiness, snoring, uh, and waking up with gasping for choking for, with, for sleep, awakening for uncertain reasons. People wake up in the middle of the night and say, why did I wake up so many times? And restless sleep, non-refreshing sleep, poor memory, intellectual function, lack of REM sleep can cause this, irritability and personality change, morning headaches and confusion. When you talk about the patient, history is very important. All the patients, especially men, deny their problems. They don't want to be any weak. So they'll say, no, nothing is wrong with me. You have to ask the bed partner, whoever that is, and say that this guy snores. Or sometimes I ask the kids. Wife says, wife says no, 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 he doesn't snore. Then I talk, talk to the kids. Yeah, dad snores. <laughs> so, because he, he might have talked to the wife. Don't tell anything about my snoring, but kids won't tell you. <laughs> I talk to you. History is very important. Housemate, that's why. Kids are very good history. Loud snoring, intermittent disruptions of the sleep. Uh, and uh, predisposing causes I talked about. And uh, obesity is the main problem because of the muscle tone issues. And uh, predisposing factors. If somebody is taking, one more thing, important thing you need to think about is if somebody has lack of sleep because they are stopping breathing and waking up, you go to the doctor, they say, okay, take this diazepam, go to sleep. Basically what you're doing is brain is trying to wake up and say, okay, I cannot sleep because I have hypoxia. You are stunting the brain so that you will continue in a hypoxic state more. What happens when the hypoxia goes down because you're not waking up, you can kill the patient. So please, if somebody is waking up many times and if they have a problem with obstructive sleep apnea, then please don't give benzodiazepines. And also alcohol is another problem. In the night when you drink alcohol, that also relaxes the muscles. Number two, it, it stunts the brain from waking up from the obstructive sleep apnea. Number three, it disrupts the sleep by increasing urine production. You got to get up to go to bathroom. So, so polysomnography is we monitor the eye movements. We, are, we monitor the leg movements. We monitor the heart. We monitor the oxygen saturation during the night. So we can see whether there is a stopping breathing. We calculate what is the... What is the stage 1, stage 2 delta sleep, REM sleep? It says uh, stages of the sleep are okay or not. How many times the pa patient is stopping breathing per hour? And what is the lowest oxygen desaturation? We also see whether they are kicking the legs in between. So depending upon that, we can differ differentiate their mild, moderate or severe sleep apnea. So what happens if you have a sleep apnea? Uh, well, physiological cons consequences, respiratory acidosis, sleep fragmentation, deoxyhemoglobin, Problems, you know, lack of daytime hypersomnolence, altered personality, you know, this is the same thing, you know, probably the wives will come and say, he's not the same man I married um, so, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, why he's mean to me and he's always, uh, he always forgets, I give the list and he goes to the market, he doesn't bring anything. So all these problems because of the memory problem and uh, irritability and unable to focus, all of these things. And also he's not taking a project. He's not a handyman anymore, sleeping all the time. So accidents, performance decrements in all the factors. You can use your imagination. So obesity, okay. We're talking about the meat of the problem here. Prevalence of obstructive sleep apnea in hypertension is estimated as high as 50%. In those with normal blood pressure, sleep apnea is associated with onset of hypertension. So obstructive sleep apnea, obesity and hypertension coexist. Hypertension is because of the hypoxic state, basically. The presence of hypertension in sleep apnea patients is estimated to be 60%. Yeah. The sleep apnea is present up to 83% of those with resistant hypertension. Especially if you are trying to use multiple antihypertensives, you must think about sleep apnea if they are obese. If they are obese, just, just the obesity is not the issue. What is the cause of the obesity? Think about that sleep apnea is, if you treat that, obstructive sleep apnea should be considered uh, for patients who poorly respond. Okay, numerous studies over the past 20 years have linked obstructive sleep apnea with hypertension. Seventh report of Giant National Committee on Prevention, Detection, Evaluation of the Treatment of High Blood Pressure 
yeah. uh, list obstructive sleep apnea is first on the list of potential causes of hypertension. So when there is a patient who is hypertension, who is big, who is snoring, who is waking up multiple things, think about sleep apnea. So sleep heart health study examined the cardiovascular consequences of sleep apnea in more than 6,000 middle-aged and older patients. Obstructive sleep, the apnea hypopnea index was linearly associated with blood pressure, with increase in blood pressure after adjusting the body mass index. So just being obese is not the issue because stopping, stopping breathing is the issue. So this goes on, on and on. Uh, so there are multiple studies. I have about 10, 15 studies talking about the same thing. Treatment of obstructive sleep apnea with nasal CPAP improves the blood pressure control in those with hypertension, especially when measured over a period of 24 hours. Within 24 hours, it falls down. Using CPAP, blood pressure is lowered during the both sleep and waking hours. It's not only during the night. A recent study reported that after nine weeks of CPAP therapy, blood pressure was decreased by 10 mm of the histolic, I mean systolic and diastolic readings, both at night and during the day. So there is no question this is a common, uh, common thinking among the treatment of especially hypertension uh, specialists and the sleep specialists. So uh, let's talk about that and how about sleep apnea and stroke? Obstructive sleep apnea has been proposed as both risk factor and consequence of stroke. So because of hypertension, and, uh, it increases the risk for stroke. Number two, if you have a stroke, what happens, depends on the type of a stroke, if it's a brainstem stroke or cortical stroke. See, the one of the part of the esophagus, part of the you know uh, laryngopharynx is also, is also semi-paralyzed and it has a low tone. So that increases the risk for obstructive sleep apnea because of the tone issues. Several studies have demonstrated that risk of stroke in individuals with obstructive sleep apnea is independent of coexisting hypertension. So, so you can do the studies where you can take that off hypertension as one of the factors, but still. Obstructive sleep, uh, sleep apnea by itself is a risk for uh, stroke. Here, sleep heart health study provides more evidence for the link between obstructive sleep apnea and stroke. Stroke risk increased incrementally with apnea hypopnea index. That means if, if somebody has apnea hypopnea index of less than 10, we call it between 5 and 10, it's like a minimal, we can watch it with, with the control of the weight and reduction of uh, obstruction. Number two, between 10 to 20 times an hour of stopping breathing, that is, that is mild, to, mild to moderate. You must treat that. If it is more than 20 to 30 is moderate and beyond 30 is very severe. So this is correlates with the increase in uh, risk of strokes. So let's, let's move on. For the, how about cardiovascular disease? Those with obstructive sleep apnea have cardiovascular abnormalities during the sleep as well as during waking hours due to increased sympathetic activity caused by repetitive breathing and obstruction and consequent sympathetic response to hypoxia and hypercapnia. So it's basically, you know, you are, you lack of sleep and increase in hypertension and uh, uh, with uh, hypoxia. So even during the day, because to keep yourself awake and trying to be, you are fighting, you are producing more ep ep epinephrine, not epinephrine from your own body, trying to be awake with your, with your brain. What is causing that is increased amount of vascular tone. Increased amount of vascular tone causes problems with hypertension, including increased load for the heart. So numerous studies have linked obstructive sleep apnea with cardiovascular disease. And one study found 50% of the patients with coronary artery disease had obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, in patients undergoing Holter monitoring, paroxysmal asystole, bradycardia, and sinus node dysfunction were more frequent with obstructive sleep apnea. So cardiac arrhythmias, even when I was a fellow, I did a study where, you know, we looked at, uh, this is first study we published, uh, it's a Wenckebeck type of a type 2 heart block uh, which is uh, only REM sleep related. So uh, they can go into uh, uh, cardiac arrhythmias including atrial fibrillation and uh, you know, uh, cardiac arrhythmias uh, including um, heart, uh, heart blocks. So clinical sinus brady tachyarrhythmias, brady arrhythmias, sinus arrest, heart blocks, supraventricular tachycardias, ventricular tachycardias, you can see all of this. So, you can also develop car pulmonary because they could be stopping breathing because of that you will cause increase in pulmonary hypertension, not only systolic, systemic, 
pulmonary hypertension and also right heart failure. If it is right heart failure, you cause more problems with the you know, clearance from the lungs and you can cause carb pulmonary and people cannot breathe even during the daytime. And this all, this is all reversible. When you put them on CPAP, this, this all can be reversible. CPAP therapy, which is a CPAP is a basically continuous positive airway pressure. Basically, you put a mask, put it into the air pump, push the air. Usually, normally, physiologically, we cause negative pressure in the chest to suck the air in. But this is, again, is the nature. We are pushing the air so that we can open up the airways. So, what it does is initially patients have choking feeling. We got to tell them and counsel them that this is okay. They can adjust that and they go to the sleep lab. We adjust the pressure at which we can stop the stopping of the breathing. So, if there is no stopping of breathing, that is the pressure. It could be 4 centimeters of water pressure or it could be 15. There is also, instead of continuous, there is also BiPAP, which is bi-level. When, uh, when, when they are inspiring, we can push the air. When they are expiring, we can cut the pressure so that they don't feel that choking feeling. So, if the pressure is high, then we need to use that BiPAP. The bottom line is sleep app does work. How about diabetes? This is very interesting, uh, most recent evidence suggests association between obstructive sleep apnea and insulin resistant independent of obesity. So it has been postulated obstructive sleep apnea may actually contribute to development of diabetes. So basically you got to, researchers have found that Patients with obstructive sleep apnea had a higher fasting glucose levels, insulin levels, and the hemoglobin A1C. So there is also metabolic syndrome. You heard of that. Japanese study found that men with sleep apnea were more likely to have metabolic syndrome, that is obesity, hypertension, insulin resistance, and this dyslipidemia. So this is a very resistant uh, treatment. You know, the, their insulin resistance goes up, and you need to keep on pouring. If somebody is obese and snoring, please look into the uh, sleep apnea as one of the positive factor. So, CPAP has been associated with the lowering of the blood pressures, I mean, blood sugars. Uh, treatment increases, increases the insulin sensitivity and improves, improves glycemic control. So, I think I talked about treatment strategy. Uh, there are so many other things. So CPAP, think about the CPAP. You can also do uvulopeletal peringeoplasty. If somebody, there is uh, this is the last point, I'm going to stop this, top of this. So CPAP is a very benign thing where you can put it on, patients tolerate, their sleep apnea is gone, they're good, they have a good sleep, soft palate there, <coughs> and pharyngeoplasty, you can create extra space, also take the tonsils out, then their sleep apnea is cured. But don't send them to uvulopeletopharyngeoplasty if the patient is like 100 kilos and 505 feet 10 inches tall, and then they are bound to fail because their obesity is going to make them drop their muzzle tone during the night even despite you have a perfect airway. Nasal surgeries don't work. The, the stopping breathing is not at the nose. This is how they cut. I'm not a surgeon. I'll send it to ENT surgeons. Just like Dwarak Nath, I'm sure. Dwarak does all these UPPs. Making a lot of money. <laughs> Okay, this is the end of the story for you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make it that. Almost. Make it that, fast. Yeah. That's my yeah. sleep lab. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, you made me <laughs> talk without taking any breath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Any questions, please? Thanks. Oh. Yes, sleep, sleep walk, walking or somnambulism happens in, in the delta sleep. This is a, this is a more of more of a developmental issue rather than it has nothing to do with REM sleep. It is the dysfunction between the deep sleep and your motor activity. The frontal lobe starts giving commands without waking up and people start moving all around. They don't have any kind of a uh, knowledge that they're walking and they can cause damage to themselves. Sometimes they can do multiple activities. They can go, a lot of my patients, they say, no, doc, I don't, sleep, I don't eat at all during the day. I have a patient. And they're, they're increasing the weight. What's going on? So then you put the camera in the house, wakes up in the middle of the night, goes to the fridge, <laughs> eats all the ice cream and everything else, whatever he's not eating in the daytime, <laughs> he's gaining weight. So that is common in somebody who has a psychological issues, usually, somnambulism. 
but kids during the age between about 8 to 10 or 8 to 12 so the growth spurt time they can have that also basically you know you need to uh, recognize that you know there is a somnam like patient in the house so that you know the all the doors are locked and make sure double locks are keys um so uh, one level house rather than two three levels because they don't fall and damage themselves probably putting a lock on the fridge also might be helpful so that they don't gain weight so thank okay. you okay thank you thank you questions pravatam yes sir i did not talk about yes good question i did not talk about that because dwarknath didn't give me time so there is a there is a uh, group called disorders of excessive somnolence disorder of excessive somnolence is two types is because one is lack of sleep through in the night whatever the reason may be sleep apnea is one of the reason it could be because of the pain or because of depression because of the legs are kicking that's different story the second one is hypersomnolence idiopathic hypersomnolence one of the things is narcolepsy narcolepsy by itself is you need to have these are the patients who have problem with the rem regulating center so they get into rem sleep all the time so what they do is they couple of things immediately once they fall asleep they go into the dream when they wake up they are waking up with dreams almost dozing off and they are going into the dreams you should not do that because stage 1 stage 2 delta sleep rem sleep you should not go into the dream sleep until about 70 80 minutes number 2 is they I, i told you brain stem inhibitory reticular formation during the rem sleep they are so paralyzed there a lot of people they wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning they are awake but they can't even open the eyes they want to move their body is paralyzed and that takes about at least you know they can't talk so it they can snap out of it but because that's a dysfunction between the wakefulness and brain stem inhibitory reticular formation so there is a disorder with rem regulatory center in the brain stem so these are called hypnogogic hallucinations hypnopompic hallucinations sleep paralysis and funny thing is about cataplexy it's really funny because if you crack a joke at them they will fall down the legs will become like a spaghetti and they can't so you can make a and things so that's called cataplexy so it has nothing to do with sleep apnea but it is to do with the disorder of hypersomnolence they can fall asleep with the drop of the hat in front of anybody even if i have an arclase plavlo i can fall asleep while giving a talk there are people who who e- eating and their head falls down onto the plate so these things can happen the treatment is different and you need to differentiate because these are the people when you do the sleep study there is no stopping breathing then we do what test called multiple sleep latency test in the in the day time we will give naps we will ask them to go to sleep and monitor their sleep 20 minute naps in between there is 2 hours so during the 20 minutes nap if they get into rem sleep rem sleep should not be there for the for the, for 70 80 minutes if they get into rem sleep within 20 minutes then you have the diagnosis of narcolepsy there are other things which can cause and also hla it's linked to hla antigens there is a group hla dr2 and dw1 and there are so many other alleles of hlas which are linked to narcolepsy so this is a totally different disorder we need to treat with uh, stimulants and if they have a problem with uh, 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 cataplexy you can treat them with uh, 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 protriptyline or tricyclic antidepressants any questions important neurotransmitters for rem sleep is serot- serotonin you know dysfunction there it could be more it could be less okay thank you all right right, right. Uh, i request uh,